Hello plant friends, my name is Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And by that I mean we're going to be unboxing some trades that I did in the mail. So I love trading with people. I've gotten a lot of my plants that way. Of course you need to vet with people and you need to have a P.O. box because you don't want people showing up to your house. But other than that, and just regular safety instructions, it can be really, really nice. So what I do first before I ever really get into the box is I like to get my label maker and everything else that I'm going to need. So my labels, my Sharpie, and so on and so forth. And I like to kind of take a mental inventory of everything in the box. And then from there, I make labels. So these are a mix of terrarium begonias and just regular begonias. And when I say regular, I mean they can be out in ambient air. Ambient air is just the air that you're breathing around you. It's not super high humidity like the begonias that like to live in terrariums. So I'm doing it this way so that way I minimize as much as possible the begonias being out in ambient air that are terrarium begonias. Something else I like to do with the labels once I have attached a name is I put the month and the day and um, that way I know exactly how long I've had it. Sometimes begonias, begonias grow pretty quickly for me. Hoyas sometimes can really go through shock and it'll be a month sometimes before I notice growth. So I just like to put the date and the month. Something else I do that I didn't show you was that I put every begonia that I received into a database. I use Google Sheets. You should also look into some kind of a recording software. I like digital because if something happens, I have it. It's always going to be there. And it's also really beneficial if someone wants to trade with me because I can just share the link to that Google Sheet and they can see at a glance all the Rex Begonias because they have their own page and then all of the Cane Begonias I have and they have a separate page. I have a brief description of each one and its humidity requirements. So here I'm adding some LECA. I have lots of different terrariums and I'm just in a bit of a terrarium phase because all of them are empty and I cleaned them because everything that I had outgrew it. So it got its own little pot. So these are all ready to go. So I have this moss. I love sphagnum moss and I really like to soak it in my old pond water. I do collect rainwater as well, but it just doesn't smell good. But pond water for some reason, or um, I'm calling it pond water, my um, fish tank water that I have, I use to water my plants. And it just has like more of a pleasant smell, if that makes sense. I like to think that it has lots of beneficial bacteria. So I like to soak my moss in that. So here we have this very beautiful begonia. And I'd never seen anything like it before. And this one is a terrarium begonia, so it is obviously going into a terrarium. I really love how this person packaged everything because it's really easy to see what the name is and it's got a little um, cloth in there. So fun story, well it wasn't fun at the time, but I was trading cuttings with someone and we were trading African violets and of course the cuttings got lost in the mail for two weeks. And the fascinating thing was that the Ziploc bags that had a piece of paper in them like these, they have paper towels, all of those made it, but the ones that didn't have a piece of paper towel in there, they rotted. And I don't really know what that means, but I just have found that that's the best way to ship them if you're shipping just cuttings. So this begonia is special because it's already pretty far along in terms of propagation. It already has teeny tiny little leaves and it's got roots. So you can see if you look very closely that there are stems and leaves forming and they're really cute. I look forward to growing this one. I don't really, 
I figured out how I wanted to situate it in there, but at the time I was like in the process of figuring it out because I was like, I don't want that red container in there, you know. I'm trying to go for like a minimalist look. And um, yeah, so moving on, I found the label to that one and tried to pair it up. At this time in the video, I'm actually looking for a different label and I found the one that I needed and that's the one that goes to the one that's in the red cup. So you can see I have lots and lots of just different containers and I've been collecting them over probably like a three year period. The big apothecary style jars are very frequently found at my local home goods and they go on clearance quite a lot because everybody's got them, I guess. So no one's really buying them up. So that's why I have so many of them in so many different sizes. So this is honestly, this next begonia, the one that I'm pulling out of this bag, is so beautiful and so unusual. It literally looks like a maple leaf. And it also kind of looks like a cane begonia at the same time. So I was on a forum and somebody was like, begonias, those are so boring. And like, obviously, anytime you're challenging someone's beliefs, you don't end up seeking out to change their mind but anyways I decided to push back on that and been like hey um they can come in so many varieties and I just like spammed them with a bunch of photos and they're like wow maybe begonias aren't as boring as I thought they were and I'm like yeah they're like an amazing genus they're an amazing genus anyways so I love begonias growing up we had tons and tons of the tuber begonias we would buy them at the store and I really didn't realize how many different begonias that there were until I got into them as a collector and like a houseplant um, enthusiast. So here is that one that has the little baby leaves and we're just gonna tuck him in right here. Yes, you could add perlite to the moss, but honestly, I haven't really had an issue with rot if I don't add it, so I kinda just like, don't see the point but then again if you have tons of issues with rot you might want to put in some perlite so I am just kind of working around the layout here and just kind of experimenting with what I think looks best so I ended up taking that begonia out of the cup so it would have more of like a cohesive look and I kind of just spaced them out I don't know what I'm gonna put in the foreground of this container. I guess I'll figure that out later. But uh, this is it for now. And you can see I have the labels kind of just like tucked away. You really can't see them at first blush, but uh, they're still there. <laughs> um, so I put that one up and now I'm going to work on unboxing the next group of begonias. There's only two varieties left. So this is a begonia venosa, and this is one that can be out in ambient air. It's unique because it has trichomes that make it look fuzzy, kind of like a bunny or a puppy. I was so excited when this collector had a venosa because I had a tomentosa, and they wanted that, so we traded. So now I have two fuzzy begonias. I don't really know if there are any other cane begonias that are fuzzy. I'm sure that someone will comment some in the comment section of this video if there are. So these are so cool, these containers I have. So there are lots of like scientific, like science class related things around Halloween. And that's what these came from. I think these came from Michael's. And nobody bought them, so I bought them on clearance, and I got two different sizes. All of my chemistry-looking containers actually came from Halloween at the Michaels near me. Same with there's a coffin terrarium I have that I didn't end up using in this video, but it also came from there, and I guess no one wanted it, so I bought it. 
So this begonia cutting kind of had a frayed end, so I kind of just gave it a fresh cut. Sometimes you can do that. I do always have flowers on my desk, and if three days go by and I remember, I will give the roses or whatever flowers are on my desk a fresh cut, and I will change out the water. So I'm just adding water to these cuttings, and these are going to go on my office shelf. So something that is really nice if you don't have a lot of time or, and you're kind of forgetful are terrariums. You pretty much can kind of just give them really nice light. You could put them in a windowsill that receives morning light or you can set up some grow lights and you can kind of mist it and as long as it's airtight, you don't really have to fuss with them. You can trim them. You can kind of just like put an organic fertilizer in there, but in terms of like neediness, they're not the most needy thing. So I'm entering into a new era of my life where I'm going to be studying for one of the most stressful and expensive exams and that I will ever take. So I'm kind of just trying to minimize my plant care needs, if that makes sense because I'm going to be really, really pressed for time and I'm just not going to be able to, you know, dedicate the time that I normally do to my plants. So I built the dancing wall and I'm trying to put as many plants as I can in terrariums or set them up on automated watering systems. So be on the lookout for more videos kind of detailing that. Here is another container and this one surprisingly was also on clearance. And this is the one I was talking about earlier where I used silicone to line the inside of it. It was pretty time consuming, but it was really worth it because it is waterproof. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the other container. And I'm going to try to find containers similar to these on Amazon and link them just for y'all because I know that it's kind of like based off your location. Some places you can find all kinds of things like some home goods don't have apothecary jars all the time like mine does. So I guess I'm really lucky in that. So I'll just link those and everything else that I'm using in the description below. If you're interested, I also have memberships now. So I have a video that is a step-by-step -step of how I built the dancing wall. So if you're interested, you can become a member and you can see that. It's a really long video because I had lots of steps. But anyways, just to let y'all know. So this is moss that I did not have the opportunity to soak overnight because I kind of ran out. So I'm kind of just showing you like you submerge the moss with your hands and you kind of press down like you're pressing dough and it'll, whenever you release it, it'll absorb all of the water in. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing out the excess water and I'm just fluffing it up. And you can kind of see those air gaps are really nice. And that's why sometimes I just don't add perlite. First of all, I'm lazy. And second, if you fluff up your moss, you have air pockets in there like anyways. So you're not going to have as much rot. So paper towels are something that I always forget to have when I'm doing stuff like this at my desk. And uh, I always appreciate past me when I put them on my desk. So I just tucked away that one piece of moss because it was just like different. This is the largest begonia leaf I have ever seen in my life. I mean, confetti yeti sounds so cool. It's just like this African violet I had called Funny Bunny. Like, it just sounds fun, you know? So you can see these cute textures. Something that I love are the backs of begonia leaves. My favorite back of a begonia leaf has to be solely mutata. I believe that's what it's called. Because it's so, like, I don't know what it is. It's like oddly satisfying to just look at it. So this guy here is a little floppy. So we're going to give him some support. These are skewers that you get at Dollar Tree or your local grocery store. And I use these things for everything. I use them to be trellises. I use them to package plants. Basically, 
if something's not standing upright or I'm trying to prevent it from being tossed around in a box, I lose, I use the skewer. So you can see how I didn't damage the plant. I just kind of have them propping him up so he can look pretty. So here is everybody. These are the new roomies in their new homes. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll be seeing you next time. Goodbye.